Uh, now, I believe we have another graphic uh, of a warning about fluoride here. Fluoride warning on Austin water utility bills, direct language from the CDC and Austin City website, as well as the material safety data sheet. So I guess this is what you're proposing to put on the water bill. And the text would read, in January of 2011, the CDC lowered the maximum level of fluoride allowed in tap water from 1.2 parts per million to 0.7 parts per million. Austin currently fluoridates at 0.7 parts per million. Prolonged or repeated overexposure to fluoride compounds may cause fluorosis, and fluorosis is characterized by skeletal changes consisting of osteosclerosis and osteomalacia and by model discoloration of the enamel teeth if exposure occurs during enamel formation. And again, that means uh, as a baby and in early childhood uh, when people are, when you're most at risk for all kinds of uh, chemical infusions. And uh, I think the most important point, though, is that this is not just here in Austin. We've showed the other cities where they've taken it out, and they have a great network here in town, uh, Fluoride Free Austin. But people need to be doing this everywhere, confronting their city councils, wherever they are, and making this an issue. And I know people have done videos on YouTube, uh, calling out the companies, calling out the fluoridated baby water. But we need to see more. Yes, and we have um, – what's interesting about this warning, the – Water Department here in Austin has said they will not put the warning on the bill unless the City Council dictates to them and votes uh, to do that. So we've got a couple of steps to get to that point. And we need your help with this. We have a City Council meeting. It's a um, Public Health and Human Services subcommittee that is going to vote three members, Morrison, Martinez, and Riley. They will potentially pass and make a recommendation that this warning be on the bill. So then it goes to the full council. Mm -hmm. Then the full council will vote. Um, so we need people at the October 18th meeting at the City Council uh, Public Health and Human Services Committee meeting at 2 p.m. Sign up would we'll probably be around 2.30 p.m. It actually starts at 3. So yeah, that so is, that's coming up that in just a little over two weeks. That is coming up in a couple yeah. weeks, and that is a big deal. And mm -hmm. then we can get, once it gets out of that little committee, can move up to the full council, and then they will vote on it. And then we will see where everybody stands. Yeah, we'd like to see action we on that. We want so to see that. So is there it. anything else you'd like to tell the listening audience out there who, as you know, are worldwide, and they're doing this throughout the Western world? You talked, too, about the graphic where there's an overall decline in, in teeth health and, and all the other factors, too. Yeah. I would, uh, well, if I could go first. Go yeah. I've always said this, and I think this brings it down to a really easy level to understand for everybody. You don't have to know the science at all. There's three inherent flaws with water fluoridation. Number one, it doesn't do its intended function. It was designed to prevent cavities, to benefit the teeth. Science has now shown over the past decade and a half or further that it does nothing beneficial for the teeth. And in fact, does a lot of deleterious things down the road like the modeling of the teeth as well as other skeletal changes. So that's, that's the first thing. It's not doing what it's supposed to do. Number two, it's not fluoride. It, you know, we talk about fluoride like it's this general term. It's hydrofluosilicic acid. It's a waste product from the fertilizer industry. The EPA does not allow it to be dumped in landfills. It cannot be aerated into the air, but somehow we can put it in our water supply. So that's the second thing. It's not fluoride. And the last thing is there's no dosage control. A little infant who is, who is fed formula, the majority of their diet is water and usually tap water. It's not going to be some nice spring water that has no fluoride in it. So a small baby will drink more water for his or her weight than I will for my weight. It's the only drug that's prescribed without a prescription. I'm glad you mentioned that because this is a line in the sand for public health yeah. everywhere. Because yeah. as you know, they propose putting lithium in mass yeah. water supplies yeah. and forced mass medication. This is yeah. not acceptable. And so if we don't say no to fluoride, we're going to see all kinds of things added. No. If, That's right. if, if I prescribe you antibiotic, I'm going to look at your body weight, your age, and, 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 I'll, and I'll call accordingly. Give them 500 milligrams. For a child, I would lower that because of the body weight and what they can consume. Fluoride, there's no dosage control. You drink what you want. You take as many showers as you want. You absorb whatever. There's no rules. And that's our argument is that this yes. is the one medication that there's just no control over. Mm -hmm. and, let's, and make no mistake about it. That's what's happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, well, I want to reiterate what Dr. Cole has said, and I've I've talked to thousands of um, people with, in, in my business as I over the last several years. And when I talk about fluoride, the one thing that gets everybody's eyes absolutely lit up 
is the concept of dose control. There is no dosage control. Where a man six and a half feet tall and a little child two to three years old gets the same amount of this chemical in one glass of water. That hits people's heart. Okay, it really gets them. They don't have to understand this research, that research, and all the conflicting information. They don't have the the technical background to really understand that, but they do understand the dose control argument. And then, and then they also have people that they know that have hypothyroidism. It's rampant in women, and it's the fluoride in the water attacks the thyroid. The thyroid wants iodine. It competes with iodine. It competes it's stronger. The fluoride mm-hmm. competes with with the iodine that your thyroid wants, and so you give it something else mm-hmm. that's in the environment that you're drinking. You know, tea. Um, coffee, it's in foods. soups, it's in Wherever foods. Wherever things are irrigated. Yeah, deri- yes. it's a derivative into all our food. We are overloaded. Can't avoid it. You cannot avoid you it. You cannot. We are, we are overloaded with fluoride. And hypothyroidism, um, ADHD, which is rampant. Yeah. Um, pineal gland issues. Pineal gland issues. And then when it's on the toothpaste, at least there's a warning on the back yes. saying it's poison. And there's no choice. There's no warning on the water glass. And you have a choice. There's unfluoridated toothpaste. Right. See, I like that. Yeah. But with the water, I mean, like, I have an RO system at home. I know Laura, you know, she's looked into this for years. Uh, you know, I try my best to buy, you know, all organic foods. It doesn't matter. You're still going to get it. It's there. Yeah. And by the way, you can't shower in RO water. Well, I guess you could, but it would be hard to set up a, a That whole is house very system. difficult. So, so yes, you, you know, it absorbs through your skin and you breathe it. And global warming is not the real oh. fight. These kind of chemical additives, that's what we can't take back from nature once it's synced into all the ecosystem and down the line. Uh, so thank you for joining us. And, of course, Austin is one of the main fronts in this battle against fluoridation. But the battle is also wherever you are out there as a viewer. And, of course, we are viewer-supported, so we hope you will support and subscribe to the InfoWars Nightly News at PrisonPlanet.tv and InfoWarsNews.com. If you can't do that, please at least spread the word about this broadcast. Send people the videos that are out there and warn them this affects the public health of everyone all across the Western world and they're going to push it into the third world, too, uh, in time, if we don't say no and fight back against this. These are our lives. We have to take it back from those who have other agendas. Thank you for joining us. Alex will be back on Monday. I'm Aaron Dykes sitting in. Good night.